Hey there, my name is Frost, and today I'll be bringing you a simple guide including tips and strategies for the mind's eye, also known as Helena Adams. Before we start, I must mention that this guide is for reference only, as characters and persona traits may be adjusted in the future. The current game version at the time of recording is 1.0.1156416. Now, let's get into the video! The Mind's Eye is a purely decoding type survivor with a slight ability to support as well. This means her main role in the game is to focus on finishing side machines as quickly as possible while leaving the containing and rescuing to the other survivors. The Mind's Eye has a passive trait which gives her a significant increase in decoding speed. This allows her to finish cipher machines much quicker than the average survivor. This benefits the entire team as the other survivors have much more lenience for how long they have to contain the hunter. Those extra seconds saved can be the difference between a win or a loss. Now, onto her external traits. Her first trait is Echo and relates to the abilities of her cane. Helena, having lost her sight at a young age, has unique vision which makes the map a lot darker and monochromatic compared to the other survivors. This can be daunting at first, but with practice and through use of her Echo ability, it will become much less of a hassle. Echo has two sub-abilities, the first being Tap Tap, which will enable her to automatically tap her cane along the ground while running or walking. This will light up the area around you as well as highlighting the hunter through walls if they are within close proximity. The second is called Strike. This ability, activated by clicking the item button, allows her to hit her cane sharply on the ground, causing a sound wave to resonate across the map. This will highlight the hunter not only to herself, but to the rest of the team. Along with this, it will give the hunter an interaction debuff, which scales to become more effective depending on their proximity to her. Her second external trait is called Mind's Eye and is the one which defines her use as a decoder character. Her heightened senses enable her decoding speed to be sharply increased by 30%, allowing her to finish cipher machines much faster than others. It also reduces the number of calibrations she receives while decoding, so there is less chance to miss one which would alert the hunter. Her third external trait is Fragile. This results in her vaulting objects like pallets or windows, as well as throwing them, to be 30% slower than the average survivor. This is a significant debuff to her containment ability and leads to the player needing to execute a lot more caution when it comes to deciding whether to vault or not. Next up is a couple of recommended personas. These two are reliable and helpful ones that I would recommend to anyone wanting to play her. My first persona recommendation is Borrowed Time, Broken Windows, Distress, Survivor's Instinct, Exit Path and Sticker. Borrowed Time, Distress and Exit Path are all essential traits for every survivor, not just exclusively Helena. Their effects are explained on screen so feel free to pause. Broken Windows helps boost Helena's weaker containment ability. It, along with knee jerk reflex, which is just before it in the persona tree, allows you to receive a speed boost after bolting windows or pals respectively. This helps create some much needed distance. Tide Turner is not recommended to her in most instances as she should be decoding at all possible times in addition to the risk of the hunter changing target. Survivor's Instinct is very useful for Helena, allowing her a decoding speed boost when a survivor is lost, accumulating up to an additional 9% when 3 people have been eliminated. This stacks along with her Mind's Eye decoding buff at 30% and can allow her to finish the ciphers even faster. Sticker is a rather situational trait, but it can be extremely useful. It allows you to heal much faster with each point invested, stacking up to 20%. It also boosts your crawling speed exponentially to a max of 90%, which can be a lifesaver when it comes to crawling out that last stretch of gate or healing up when the hunter is distracted. Alternatively, you can use a persona where you switch the points you used for Survivor's Instinct or Sticker and invest in Snooze. This trait slows the countdown of the rocket chair. As a decoder with relatively weak containment ability, it is possible that you may be incapacitated quickly, and having snooze will allow you to keep the hunter's attention away from the other survivors just a little bit longer. With those recommendations, I have attached some good team compositions for the mind's eye. Having at least one rescuer is extremely important, and the two containment types will allow the hunter's attention to stay away from her. Harassers especially can be helpful to support her if she ends up having to contain the hunter. Alternatively, an additional decoder such as Prisoner can help speed up the ciphers even more. Now for some general tips. Firstly, you must learn good timing to use her Echo Strike ability. It must be noted that if the hunter is wearing headphones, they will be able to hear the location the strike comes from, which can lead them directly to you. Using her cane at the start of the match allows her to support her teammates by displaying which hunter it is and their location. In order to avoid being found first from this, she can use such information to rotate away from the hunter's direction and her original spawn, allowing her a safe place to decode. It is also beneficial to use Echo Strike periodically throughout the match, both to keep the team updated on the location of the hunter as well as slowing their interaction speed to assist her teammates from a distance. However, you should avoid using Echo Strike right after a survivor has been eliminated as this may alert your location to the hunter and they can teleport directly to you. Unfortunately, sometimes having to contain the hunter will be unavoidable, so when that time comes it's important to be cautious. Helena's vaulting and pallet throwing debuff must be taken into account, so make sure to leave enough time to ensure you won't get terror shocked. 
Make use of enclosed areas and use her tap tap ability which allows her to see the hunter through walls to your advantage. Keeping an eye on them at all times makes it much easier to avoid running into them if they suddenly change direction and it can help predict when the hunter is going to walk through a pallet. Many hunters will try and take advantage of Helena's pallet throwing debuff by swinging at it and hope she will drop it and they can hit her when she does. The key is to be patient, wait for them to give in and try to walk through or use this time to run to the next pallet instead. When not containing the hunter, make sure to always be finishing the ciphers. As the decoder, it's your job to ensure they get done as soon as possible. Paying attention to pings on the minimap to help finish other survivors' ciphers when they go to rescue can also be a big help. Overall, the Mind's Eye can be a rather daunting character to try. With barely any containment aids and her unique vision, you may be put off from trying, but it's perfectly normal to make mistakes and go down quickly at the start. With practice, you'll improve to become the Helena main of your dreams. Good luck and take care!